So welcome back, this time around, just me. What I wanna do is talk about what's, what fragrances I actually have in my collection. Uh, these are fragrances that I've gone out and actually purchased myself. So these are not, these haven't been gifted, uh, apart from Christmas or birthday presents or something like that. But even then I've sort of said, I want that one. Um, so uh, I guess the biggest question is, you know, why did I buy them? You know, why did I wanna make them part of my collection? And if you're looking for a new fragrance or something that you want, something that's a little bit different, um, then I would like to put forward the following recommendations and I'll make sure that I cover all the fragrances that are in my collection, okay? So welcome to the Collector's Collection. <laughs> feel that it's only fair that we start at the very beginning. So I've always been into fragrances, even as a, as a young kid. When I say young kid, you know, seven or eight, I, I remember my dad, uh, Old Spice was his fragrance of choice. Now I thought, you know, as a kid, I thought Old Spice was the ultimate in swag. Let me just put that out there. Um, so I've always been into fragrance. I've always been into smells and I do have a very acute sense of smell. Um, I can pick up things very, very well. I'm not a perfumer, so, so I'm qualified. I'm definitely not a perfumer. I don't have a perfumer's nose. I'm always so impressed with people, uh, you know, guys who are gangster in this field and they'll just smell something and they'll go, oh, yes, I can, I can smell juniper berries and I can smell coriander and I'm like, oh, I can smell fresh <laughs> and it's kind of you know it, it smells nice you know that that's that's where that's where my where i go but i do know that i like smelling good and i love when other people smell good too so when you someone who's wearing a, a nice perfume if they're coming close to me i have to talk about it i have to just acknowledge that the smell that they have is awesome and what is it as i said let's go back to the very beginning and i Probably about three years ago, we were traveling through uh, Florence, Tuscany, that area, when we could travel. And I came across this um, Apocathry, I think that's how you say it, or let's say a pharmacy. Uh, that was actually built or established in 1221, which was called Santa Maria Novella. Now, I had no idea. Well, firstly, I had no idea that niche fragrances was actually a thing. I just thought all these old perfumes were only found in department stores, not realizing that there were uh, artisanal uh, versions to this. You know, these are a uh, much smaller batch there. Uh, they use uh, oils as opposed to, well, I didn't realize that, that a lot of the designers were using a lot of synthetics. Uh, these are actual genuine oils that are being used. And more importantly, this history, it blew my brain. I mean, uh, 1221, uh, th these monks even made um, uh, pharmaceutical products during the Black Death, during the bubonic plague. So the history on this just blew my brain. And then I went in, again, in Florence, they have the, their, um, the, the pharmacy, I think it was built in 18 something. So you can actually go and visit when we travel again, you have to go to this place. It is absolutely awesome. Uh, it, it was built in 18 something. It's all wood paneling. Anyway, I remember walking in there and just get I was blown away. I'm just thought like, you know, what is one, the history of it. I mean, the, the history was phenomenal. And then to see this, this beautiful uh, establishment, but then the smells, the, the actual fragrances and the scent that was in there was just next level. And I remember seeing this sort of fragrance bar and it was this beautiful wooden panel. The lady came in and she stood behind it. It was almost like she was elevated. It was almost like a, like a, like, like a religious experience. You know, she stood up on this thing, all the perfumes were there and she began to explain all these different things. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I have always loved perfumes. I've always loved beautiful fragrances. Uh, and now all of a sudden I became, and then after this I be, you know, became exposed to the niche fragrance world. And I have, it, I am in love. It's artistic, it, there's something about it that, and, and it's not, the thing that I love I think is that it's not mass produced. And so, well you just won't smell like the next person. I mean sometimes when you put on something that you can buy in a department store then you know 50 other people might be walking past you and you'll smell the same. Whereas in this scenario here you have a very unique fragrance and this is why I've, I've fallen in love with this whole world. So anyway number one my first one is this guy here and as you can see there's still some fragrance. So this is uh, this fragrance here is three years old um, still smells awesome, but I now use it very sparingly because um, 
I don't know. I just, I mean, I know I can go buy another one. I mean, it's not like they did make it, you know, uh, there's more of these around, but this is my first one. It's, it's my baby. Anyway, so this one here is called Alba de Sol. And um, as I mentioned, I, I use the stopper. So I use it as, a, as an aftershave. I know I shouldn't, but I like using it as an aftershave. Honestly, this fragrance, uh, I remember when I was there, I actually bought three different uh, perfumes. I, I, I couldn't help myself. I mean, and plus the salesperson was, was awesome. Um, and this one here, I still remember when the first time I smelt it, I, I, I'd never quite smelt anything like it. It was um, the, the, the fragrance. It's, so it's considered as a, um, uh, it's considered as a, a fresh woody sort of, sort of fragrance. Um, the opening notes is bergamot, but with spices. So it doesn't have that sort of classic uh, citrusy sort of um, opening. Um, then after that, it goes into Korean pine. And this is where the fragrance really takes shape. So it's the Korean pine that's used. And then finally in the base, it does go into woods and patchouli. So it keeps that, that freshness, that woody fragrance, that foresty, that foresty fresh sort of fragrance. It's something pretty special. Now on, um, on me, the, it, is a, it is an eau de cologne, um, so meaning that it has two to four percent, but honestly, the longevity on this on me is phenomenal. I can, um, as I mentioned, I use it as an, as an aftershave. Uh, I can shave, put it on, and it will be with me for the rest of the day. Um, uh, I was once in a meeting late in the day, three to four o'clock. I broke out into a, into a cold sweat. Uh, I think I wasn't quite ready. They asked me a question and you know, when you're like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do now? And in that moment, I just, poof, and the fragrance exploded. The other thing about it is that it projects really well. I do get a lot of compliments. So apart from my initial, uh, my immediate family, my, my wife actually loves this fragrance on me, but I also get a lot of great compliments from other people. So it actually has awesome settlage on it. Um, the price point, um, price point is there. It's actually fairly well priced. Uh, it's a good entry level. So if you're new to niche uh, as, a, as a category, niche, niche fragrances, I would recommend any of the Santa Maria novellas. So there it is, the very first one. This was the, uh, the one that uh, started me off on this journey. Please tell me what's your favorite fragrance? What's the one that started you off on this journey also? Um, I, f I find that there are so many wonderful fragrances that I'm sort of uncovering and discovering as I continue to move through this. So please put in your comments stuff that you love, things that you're enjoying. Um, maybe there's some other fragrance in the Santa Maria novella that you also enjoy. I'd love, to hear, I'd love to hear about that stuff because I like to go out and also test it for myself and see what that's like. Anyway, thanks everybody. Thank you.